Hey guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day, night, or evening from whenever you're watching. Um, I want to first of all say thank you for your support. Thank you for reading my book online. Thank you for um, supporting me. Thank you for watching my sermons every week. I really appreciate it. Big or small, it all helps. Um, today my sermon is going to be called The Downfall to Destiny. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what your books do and I pray that you'll fill my mouth with your words. Father, I pray that your spirit will uphold me, hide me behind the cross. Let Rachel die and Christ live. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. As we listen, oh God, open our ears to the mysteries of, of what you have to say about destiny. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, hi guys. I was thinking about last week's sermon and how I talked about um, the call and how it can cause you to be lonely and how it can cause you to be ostracized. And I just realized that last week's sermon was kind of a downer and I'm so and I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to scare any of you out there. Um, just know that um, beyond all this stuff that you're going through, God's going to get glory from it. Know that all the stuff you're going through, God is is working behind the scenes although you may not see it he's working and um, I just wanted to to say that well today's sermon is called the downfall of destiny I saw something the other day that um, kind of jarred me and put this thought into my head um, I forget what the um, precise quote, quote was. Um, it was something like, the enemy can see your potential. And that, that quote jarred me because, yes, although he can see your potential, because we often, in our exuberance, say say things about our dreams about our goals see I believe um, the enemy is not omniscient like God like he doesn't know everything he knows what we tell him and he knows what he can say um, he's not omniscient like God but he knows what we tell him and when we get excited about our destiny, whatever that may be, whether it may be being a mom or being, um, being a business owner or whatever it may be, um, it could be many jobs throughout our 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 career of working, our career of being, it could be starting um, an inner city school for uh, kids that don't have any money, whatever it is. When the enemy sees that in you, he will use anything, anything to detract you from it. Because he knows if you were to find out exactly who you were in Christ and who God, God's made you to be, it would be so powerful. So he'll use the different MO but he'll, for each person, but the, um, but the result will be, but the goal will be the same. 
um, the goal is to get you off God's purpose. Because initially, in the garden, um, God created man to be like him on the earth. And when Adam and Eve fell, that kind of was, bro was broken. All kinds of thorns and thistles um, started um, coming up from the ground and all these things started happening. And Jesus uh, came to redeem the world from that. Um, but still, after Jesus, the devil's still been trying to get the people of God to not believe that they have a purpose and to not believe that they, that they are somebody. Because the minute, the minute you understand who you are and whose you are, and the gravity of that, it changes everything. So the devil will get you in whatever way he can to detract your destiny so you don't know who you are. And something occurred to me uh, when I was thinking about this. Um, what, what will mostly happen is the evil one will use your God given, will try to use your God given gifts for his agenda. So if you're, if you have a God given curiosity and a, and a God given gift for language and talking, he may your propensity uh, may be to gossip where, whereas God will, ha um, will have you to maybe be um, a motivational speaker or a um, detective uh, fighting for the good of people. But because God gave you that whole um, ability to talk thing and that whole curiosity, the devil's using it for his benefit. And let's say if you're good with music, God may want you to break out and do songs for the kingdom that have, has never been done before but you're using your gifts to to um, to do things that are not pleasing to the Lord um, because the moment you find out the gravity of who you are and whose you are, the game's over. And the Lord said to me a few months ago, he said to me, I'm changing the game. He said, I'm using uncommon means to get my glory across. And I'm using the the foolish things to confound the wise. He's like, I'm I'm getting ready to use you in a way that has never been used before. And the the thing about it is, um the thing with sin, I was thinking about this um to when you're born when your parents get together and they raise you before that there is a divine destiny on your life and 
what what happens is sometimes most times light will throw you some curveballs just to detract from your destiny because the enemy knows once you get a foothold on your destiny you will be unstoppable so he will he will surround you with self-doubt he'll cause you to struggle with eating he'll cause you to struggle with um, relationships that are not good for you he'll cause you to struggle with all kinds of things because he knows if you were to stop and really embrace who you were you'd be unstoppable I think the greatest crime in the world is for people number one to not know who they are and number two it's to not know who they are you've got so many people walking around not knowing who they are and whose they are um, that it's so sad I, I wish people would understand that God is not a religion, it's a relationship. And I know, um, Christian, sorry, not God, but Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. I know we say that, but, but let me break it down for, for you, what that means. Christianity is a set of do's and don't um to maybe get into heaven not christianity uh religion sorry religion is a set of do's and don'ts to maybe get into heaven whereas a relationship with god is a living breathing active relationship and I was saying this in, in an email the other day. A lot of people say they love the Lord, they know the Lord, they have given their lives to the Lord. But, but I, would, I would, would have to just say about 70% of people don't even know what that means. Because we're afraid to actually say... Lord, I don't know how to love you. I don't know how to get to that place. Because I can know of, let's say, I can know of Michael Jordan. I can know his birthday. I can know all this stuff about Michael Jordan by looking up online. But I'm not his wife. I don't know what he likes to eat for breakfast. I don't know his pain or his um, favorite anything. I just know about him. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people. They, they, they know about God, but they don't know God intimately. They don't know the Lord intimately. They say this prayer and they say they love the Lord, um, but but it's not intimate. It's more of a I know you from the internet kind of thing. Um, and he wants so desperately for his children to know him intimately and to love him intimately. He wants so desperately to reveal himself in a unique way and he wants so desperately to under for you to understand first of all how excuse me how much you're loved and how much you're accepted if people spend so much time nowadays trying to copy this person and that person if you knew what the Lord had planned for you and the destiny the Lord had planned for you, 
you wouldn't worry about that stuff. And, and the only way to do that is to get to know the Lord. It's to seek His face. It's to say, Lord, what do you want from me? And you know what? We, we often try and pretty it up. But the Lord doesn't want you to pretty it up. He just wants the real you. Um, the reason why I often don't uh, pray after my videos or say, this, say what is called the sinner's prayer is because I was convicted um, by the Lord to say that he doesn't want to hear you say my words. He wants it, you to say your words to him. And I think if we can get back to just knowing and loving God with the intimacy that we are supposed to, to it will change our lives. I think we're I think some of us are stuck in a in a rut that we just go to church Sunday after Sunday and we do all this uh, Sunday after Sunday but it doesn't become intimate. Um, it's like forgive this reference there's a video um, there's a video um, there's a movie called To Can Play That Game and in the movie um, Vivica Fox tries to um, uh, explain the games been playing and how, and how to um, understand men and there's a scene in this movie where she comes over to the guy's house and she gets him all worked up like all worked up and she says oh I'm sorry I have to leave and she gets him and he's like what and um he's like she's like sorry I have to go and she leaves him right there without satisfying the guy to put it PC um and then that's what we do with God we say I love you I praise you and whatever and we leave, we kind of leave him when it's about to get good but if when he's about to have one minute away from blessing us or freeing us or doing whatever we tend to do something else or whether whether it's go with our kids whether it's do with with whatever and leave him there and expect him just to be a genie the lord says i want you to know me i want to reveal my mysteries to you but I cannot reveal my mysteries to you unless you let me in, unless you break down those walls, unless you take off that churchy mask, unless you use words that you normally use in everyday life to communicate. I will not be able to penetrate you. I will not be able to bless you and do what I really want in your in your life unless you are real with me and I think a lot of people don't know how to be real with God they don't know that it's okay um, to say oh Lord I don't know they they think it's just the religious and they think it's just oh you can't do this you always have to speak um, Positively and speaking positively is very important, but sometimes you just need You just need to say Lord. I know it's this but I'm not there yet And he understands that you're not there yet and he'll 
and he'll work with you to get there. He, he understands you're, you're not superhuman. He understands that you struggle with that, and he'll work with you to get there. And when he does, you will be so amazed at, at the lack of stress in your life. See, I think the main reason why we stress is because we don't let God have all our lives. We, we give God the churchy part of us. We don't give God all of us, and I think that's why we have so much stress. And he's saying, um, like John Legend, all of me wants all of you. Um... And he's saying, G give it to me. Give all of it you to me. You don't have to do this alone. You don't have to go it alone. And destiny does not have to be your downfall. Destiny is what I purpose for you to do. Your destiny is going to be bright. Your destiny is going to be full of my glory. People are going to marvel at what I put in you, but you just have to clear, clean all that junk out and get real with me so I can work on you. He understands that you're a work in progress. He understands who you are and whose you are. And we need to stop running with God. We need to stop playing these turkey games and get real with God. And, and he, if you're not, quote unquote, there yet, he'll get you to the there he wants you to be. We're all growing, we're all changing, we're all evolving into what Christ wants us to be. And he knows what in every part of us. He knows the dark side of us, he knows the happy side of us, he knows the sad side of us. And he wants it all, cause you he can't he can't heal what you don't reveal, and when you reveal it, I know it's scary, but he'll be right there. He'll be right there, and he loves you so much. If you can get an inkling um, about how he loves you. You will be amazed. It will blow your mind. If you can get an inkling, inkling as to how he loves you, it will blow your mind. If you can really see through his eyes. And one one question he's impressing on my spirit to share with you um, is to ask him, Lord, how do you see me? Lord, how do you see me? Not how I see me, but how do you see me? And when you start seeing yourself the way God sees you, it will bleed into your life like crazy. It will bleed into your life. And, and your self-esteem will become God-esteem because it would be like how God esteems you. And that will become yourself, you. And a lot of people copy other people because they don't think they're worth anything. But the Lord sees them as a pearl of great price. The Lord sees you raising those kids as a wonderful opportunity to engage with and raise the next generation. The Lord sees you at that janitorial job as a wonderful person to show um, in the building when you're cleaning the glory of God. Whatever he's purposed you to do, whatever he's um, defined for you to do, He's going to get his glory from it. He needs a person in every area. 
He doesn't just need preachers and teachers in the five-fold ministry. He needs the computer technicians. He needs the um, attendants. He needs the attendant care services. He needs the janitorial uh, cleaning stuff at the mall. Cleaning stuff at the mall. Wherever you are, you are a conduit for God's glory. So be your conduit. And be your conduit. And while you're waiting for your ultimate destiny, be a conduit exactly where you are. And sometimes it's not about this big ultimate destiny. Sometimes it is, but more often than not, it's about working your working your salvation out and your destiny out right where you are. So instead of waiting for this big call and this big destiny, work it out where you are. If you're a mom, raise those kids to be champions. If you're a teacher, speak life into those students so that they'll achieve their goal. Wherever you are, just just be a little Christ. Because people need Christ and, and the fruits of the Spirit. And, and, and what people need most besides um, the actual fruits of the Spirit of the Spirit is people need love. People need to be accepted. People need to know that no matter who they are, no matter who they are, Jesus, Jesus died for them. Jesus loved them. And although he's a good father and doesn't approve of everything we do, he still loves us. And he's willing to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we don't have to do anything. So it's not the Jesus loves me anyway. I can do what I want kind of thing. It's the Jesus loves me and will co correct me if he decides to. If he deems it necessary to. And when the Lord corrects you, it's so gentle. It's really according to your personality when the Lord corrects you. So you don't need to be afraid of the correction of the Lord. He'll do it in the most gentle way. He'll do it in a way suitable for your personality. Because uh, because you are his child and he knows your personality, he'll do it in a way suitable to your personality. Uh, oh, so guys... I thank you for listening to me today. You you guys have been so great with your views and with your comments. And my family has been so great. Hi, Mom. Thank you for your encouragement. And everyone else who's been listening to me, you don't know how good the comments feel. And I, I pray that God overtake you with his spirit this week until we meet again next week. Thank you. Bye. There is a spirit anointing skin to send you away.
See you next week, guys. Take care. Bye. Love you.